The Mishima Museum, Tugai Kaban I have relayed my story to countless individuals, both known and unknown, using nearly identical phrasing and always beginning from the start. Repeating this narrative so frequently has caused me to question whether it truly occurred. Sadly, my physical condition is deteriorating. A throat ailment that cannot be cured limits me to articulating only a few sentences each day. As such, I am deliberate in my selection of words, often keeping them to myself for later use, and retiring for the night without ever having spoken them aloud. I am acutely aware of my solitude, acknowledging that confessing my desire to only be in the company of my parents offers some measure of comfort. While the courage that I once possessed has waned considerably, I endeavor to express my emotions through gestures and facial expressions, reminding myself that I am still human. The reason for my writing this remains unclear, despite my psychologist's recommendation to do so. While I'm skeptical that this exercise, intended to mitigate the devastating impact of my situation, will prove effective, I hesitate to offend anyone with my dissent. Yasemin, take a deep breath and write down everything that you can no longer share with anyone. It will be therapeutic, my psychologist advised. Nonetheless, I have come to realize that there is no story that cannot be forgotten by the listener, a realization that perhaps should have occurred to me much earlier. The irony of questioning such a notion when I can no longer speak is not lost on me. Let me begin with my most cherished tale, one that would certainly hold a prominent place in any collection of my narratives, the Mishima Museum. Yukio Mishima was likely the catalyst for the first fracture in my life, a statement that may appear audacious, but I am certain of its veracity. A life can splinter innumerable times, with a notebook page or a torn photograph often serving as the source. My recollection of Mishima is not one that could have befallen just anyone. It is a memory that borders on the implausible and is now forever trapped within me due to my inability to speak. At the corner of my desk sits a small frame containing a photo of Mishima's decapitated head, which I took myself and of which I had numerous copies made in the hopes that you too would receive one. This photo represents one of the most sorrowful events in my life. While it may seem improbable to those familiar with Mishima's life, who believe that his head and body were interred following his suicide, the truth is that his severed head was displayed for an extended period. Thirty-seven years ago, while working on my doctoral thesis, I visited an exhibition where Mishima's head was on display. Little did I know that this experience would shape the course of my work. My advisor and I decided to publish the thesis as a book, and we wanted it to be exceptional. To achieve this, my advisor suggested that I go to Japan and take my own photos. Thanks to his Japanese wife's connections, I was provided with numerous opportunities, which led me on an unforgettable journey. As I stood in front of Mishima's severed head, my emotions were overwhelming, impossible to put into words. With the help of my advisor's wife's connections, I had been granted a special visit to the exhibition, entering the room at a time when nobody else was there. The lady in charge led me past guards and locked doors until we arrived at the room where Mishima's head was displayed. After taking photographs of the severed head with a mix of admiration and fear, the lady asked me a question that caught me off guard. Would you like to kiss him? My heart began to race, pounding twice as fast as before, the sensation coursing through my entire body. With furrowed brows, I asked if I had misunderstood, but the woman's reply was clear. If you want to kiss him, you can. I cannot recall what happened next, nor what was said between us, 
but I stepped through the large door, leaving her behind. The lips were cold, and memories of past punishments melted away like the sun, replaced by a sword that pierced my insides, tearing my internal organs asunder. It felt as though I were regurgitating my stomach and lungs onto the wet pavement of a rain-soaked street, a pain in my throat, a wound. It was like a deafening silence. As I pulled away from the severed head's wrinkled lips, my gaze fell upon a dry blood stain that stretched across half of its neck. Overwhelmed with emotion, I closed my eyes and let out a torrent of tears, my throat convulsing with a violent spasm. It felt as though I had consumed an entire lifetime's worth of experience in that moment, and I was certain that I would never be hungry again. But as it turns out, I was wrong. The next morning, I returned to the exhibition without taking any more photographs or accomplishing anything else of note. It's been 37 years since that day, yet I still feel a persistent hunger deep within me. In many ways, I feel as though I never truly returned from that massive door. <laughs>